So today I will be talking about something that um, a group of insects that tend to be overlooked or forgotten, um, but they're also important pollinators and those are flies. And that's especially a group that's really kind of interesting to me and I, I, re I really, really am passionate about flies. So, and hopefully I will spread the, spread the joy and you'll go outside and look at flies in a completely new way by the end of this presentation. So, um, so just a, a quick, um, a quick outline of what I'll be talking about today. Um, first, I'll sort of, I'll start out, you know, we'll, we'll go through a few steps, but first of all, I'll start out with how to recognize a fly that's on a flower compared to other insects that are on flowers. Some of you may know this already, but some of you may, may want a refresher or, or find out how it's done. Then the next step will be um, who are the fly visitors and who are the common ones who are more, who are a, a, a bit more uncommon and you know what you can find on flowers, um, what kind of flies you can find on flowers. Um, then we'll, we'll try to answer the question why do flies actually visit flowers and what do fly, uh, what flowers do flies actually favor over ones over another's are, are there some favorites or not. Um, where do flies pollinate most frequently. What cultivated plants are pollinated by flies and why they're important in, in, in agricultural systems. And of course, and then I'll kind of broaden out and have a look more about um, how we can help pollinators overall, but also how we can help fly pollinators um, specifically a bit, a bit more as well. So, so, so a, bit, a bit broader, but um, I, I think that's kind of a nice little outline for a presentation that will, will introduce you to flies as pollinators. So to start out, um, you have how to recognize flies on flowers. There's a few points that are kind of easy to, to do. Um, so for example, if you see a, a butterfly sitting on a flower, you'll, you'll pretty much know that it is a butterfly compared to a, a, a fly, for example, on, uh, uh, here on, on, your, um, on your left. So if, so, 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 so because I mean, you know, butterflies have, you know, two pairs, uh, two sets of wings that are kind of showy and, and, and kind of, and, and very, very and extremely colorful, whereas flies tend to be a little less colorful, but they are colorful anyway, but um, maybe a tiny bit less. And so they're not as, as charismatically colorful. Um, so those are, are, are quite easy to tell apart. Um, and so, so you'll probably know the differences between the two. Something that might be a tiny bit harder is looking at the difference between beetles and flies. So if you look here, you have uh, you have the, um, a couple of beetles uh, on flies, and you can see that there's this this um, that they have these these harder outer wings um, on on their bodies called elytra, and so 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 those are are pretty specific to to, to beetles, whereas flies tend to have um, kind of soft soft outer wings and and they have a, a bit of a different look, and so you can actually. They're they're easy to tell apart one group from the other, but it's still it's still a bit more challenge from than than you can have from butterflies. So, but but I I, I still kind of consider butterflies and beetles quite easy to tell apart. But then you get to a bit harder groups to tell apart, and so these ones. Um, so when you look at this, for example, you have this group here, and and your group on the left and and your group on the right. And you can actually see that there's a lot of similarities in colors, similarities in, in fuzziness or in hair uh, or in hairiness. And so, how do you know which group is is which? And that's and then when you kind of when you kind of separate them out, you can actually see that you know there's there's certain characteristics that you can actually see to differentiate bees and wasps from flies um, from from the group of flies. So there, um, but there there could be hard they they could be mistaken from one another, but there are clear differences that you can tell them apart, and it's actually. And it's actually not that hard once you start looking closer at them and, and start appreciating their differences. Um, so so he, here, if, if you look at the differences, um, so on your left, you have this big, uh, under the bees and wasps, and it's actually a, a bumblebee uh, image. And on the left, you have, a, and on the right, sorry, you have your, your hoverfly or your, um, a fly um, a representative. So if we start from the head and we go down to the abdomen to, to look at some of the differences, you can see that the antennae, um, so on the head, there's these long, uh, there's these longish straight antennae on bees and wasps, whereas on flies, they tend to be a lot shorter and more, uh, and more kind of like little knobs um, on the head. And so that's one, uh, that, that's one of the differences, that, that's, that's a character that you can use to, to differentiate between the two groups. Another character is right between the, the thorax, so, so the thorax up here and the abdomen down here, 
Um, in bees and wasps, they, they, they can be kind of cinched in. So it, it, it's as if, you know, somebody, somebody took a belt and, and, and cinched it up way, way too much. And so you can actually, um, so, so you can actually see a clear separation between the thorax and the abdomen. Whereas flies tend to be a much more straight, um, uh, straight conf configuration for, for, better lack, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, and so the thorax and the abdomen kind of have kind of a much more kind of oval or, 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 or rounded looking um, a structure. And so you can act, so, so some, some, some groups you can actually differentiate by having that, that waist or not having that waist. And then another really good character is, and, and one that's, that's pretty much fail safe, is the number of wings. So for example, uh, so bees and wasps have two sets of wings on each side. So they have a forewing and then a hindwing in the back. Um, so, so they have two sets of wings and so four wings total uh, on, on the insects, whereas flies themselves have um, the forewing, which, which they fly with. And then the hindwing is really, um, is, is different, uh, is, is, is modified into this little tiny knob-like structure. I and mean, you see in the back here, it's called a halter and it actually helps, uh, helps a fly fly through the air uh, by, by, maintaining, um, by maintaining its flight directly uh, to, to, keep it hor to keep it nice and horizontal. So you can actually see that, um, so flies have one big uh, set of wings. So two wings on, on the fly and four wings on bees and wasps. So with, with the character, with the antenna character, the waist character and the wings, you can actually know that these are two different groups. And so next time you, you go outside, you can, um, and, you, and, you, and you're not sure what you're seeing, actually kind of have, oh, actually have a, a look at it uh, a bit more closely. So now we know how to recognize a fly on a flower. Um, and so, so let's have a, a, a kind of a look over the most common fly visitors and, and some fly visitors that may not be so common and may, back, and may actually kind of surprise you um, a, a bit as well. So one of the most common flies are the surfidae or the hoverflies. Uh, another, another name for them are flower flies because they really do like flowers as adults quite a bit. Um, you can see actually this, this, this fly right here it has, you know, pollen all over its face and, 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 and the bottom side of its thorax because it just goes right, right into the flower and sort of, and just digs through it and sort of puts its whole, um, puts its whole face right into the, right into the flower. And so it's, it's, it's kind of a, you know, and, and so this group um, of hoverflies is actually a, um, is, is actually a group that, um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, so it's, it's actually, a group that really, because they pollinate so much, is actually a group that is, is uh, I kind of consider the, the bees of the fly world because they, they pollinate so much. And so another picture of, 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 a, little, uh, of a little surface fly feeding on, uh, on, so, on, some, on some flower, uh, on a flower here. Um, you can see that this is kind of how you typically see them on, on flowers. Um, another picture here, this is a, a, in Queen Anne's Lace. I mean, they, they go right inside the flower and they're, they're sort of, they hang around in there. Um, you can clearly see the one wing uh, on this fly and it's just kind of sitting inside w without a problem um, and, and enjoying its, uh, its pollen and, and, and nectar. Um, here's another hoverfly um, early in the spring, probably. Um, and it's kind of sitting on its flower. You can see the pollen all over the abdomen. Um, so, uh, one, um, so flies don't have Whereas bees have structures to hold pollen uh, that they collect to, to, to bring back to their hives, flies don't have that. They tend to um, cover, um, not really cover themselves, but they tend to get covered by pollen quite um, all over. And they kind of just roll around there, kind of like, you know, like a dog would roll around in grass. They kind of get, get all covered with, with pollen and then they kind of fly around and that's how they pollinate one, uh, one flower from, from the next. Um, oh, here's another picture of of a uh, of a couple of hoverflies really early in the, uh, in early spring on early spring flowers. Um, they just um, they just kind of hang out there, and um, and and sort of and just crawl over each other if they have to. And this is uh, a hoverfly on a um, on a cucurbit uh, uh, flower. Um, I'll talk a bit more later on about cultivated plants, and so and so they do help out with pollination of uh, in agricultural systems quite a bit as well. So Julia, yes. I have a, a couple questions that, um, that have come in the chat. Um, so first of all, Carrie loves their eyes and she's wondering, um, do flies have the best vision of 
like from other insect families? Well, that's a very interesting question. I, I wouldn't say they have better vision, but mm -hmm. it's because they are, they, they, I mean, most insects have, have compound eyes. So, so they have, a, so they can see quite a bit. Um, I, I wouldn't say they, they do have the, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say they have better vision, for example, than bees, but, um, but it's something I would have to look into a bit more deeply because I, I don't, I, I haven't seen any um, information about um, comparing visions between um, flies and, and other um, insects. So, so it's not a clear answer, I'm sorry. That's, that, I think that, that works. Um, um, on Alexandria uh, said she noticed that all the flies have very large compound eyes that are almost touching. Is that a good way to identify them and separate them from things like bees or wasps? Um, it, 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 it could be a good character, but some of, but a lot of flies, um, so, so for example, so this family tends to have very large eyes. Um, so, so the hoverflies tend to have very large eyes that, that kind of cover the whole head if we go back. Um, some tend to have a bit smaller eyes, so it, it might not be the best character itself. So, so I would really stick with, you know, sort of number of wings, the waist, and the antenna. But um, once you get a better sense of how to differentiate, um, th then you might actually notice, um, then you might actually kind of be able to narrow down which, which family of fly um, and a much more particular group of fly you actually have. So, yeah. So, so I mean, yeah. So eye size could be a good character um, later on. So I know that with things like um, mammals or birds, eye placement is very um, important to like, you know, if they're on the side, then they can, you know, have better range of vision and stuff like that. Obviously, we don't have a great range of vision without turning our heads. We can't see anything past about here. Um, so with flies and, you know, the thinking of the hoverflies eyes kind of wrapping around the head is it so they can kind of see more around them that they have a better range of vision or is it just kind of design I, <laughs> no i i think they can definitely see a bit more behind them than well definitely more than humans um that, that, that's for sure um yeah so so but um yeah so i'm so so, so they can see you know sort of sideways and a, and a bit more back as well so I think it does help them in sort of in, in evading, you know, predators or, or, or other things like that. And, and sort of if you walk behind them and you, and you try to catch them a bit too, too quickly, then they, 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 they know you're there and you can actually kind of sometimes sense that, that they know you're there. And so, so, it's, so it's probably kind of, so their sight has, is, is, is pretty good. And so they, they, I, I think they could see back, but not as far back, not completely to the back of, of, of their, you know, of their bodies. Probably. So while, while we're um, kind of learning to identify from a distance, you know, I, I feel like I need to get a little bit closer if I see an insect on, an, on a flower um, to determine, you know, fly or bee or wasp. Is there like a secret to sneaking up on them? Oh, just, uh, I, I, I tend to sort of walk up really slowly. Um, if I see a, a flower with a whole bunch of insects on it, I kind of, I walk slowly to it. And, 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 and as I approach it, I, I, I make sure, you know, sort of if I, if I see them starting to stir or, or sort of get um, a bit, a bit antsy about, uh, about, you know, sort of about me being too close, I kind of, I kind of, you know, step back and kind of, you know, um, and t take my time approaching, approaching the, uh, the, uh, the insects to be able to get as close as possible. So it takes time and kind of it, it takes patience to be able to sort of get really kind of up close to an insect and a flower. But um, but it's it's definitely doable. You can't do it quickly, but if you go slowly uh, with it, then you can definitely get um, a really close look. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much. I'll let you get back to your presentation. Yeah, no problem. So um, so the next group are the, are actually called bee flies. Uh, commonly, um, but the, the family is called Bombaliidae. Um, they're really, really fuzzy, and you can see this one here has, um, well, some of the species are really, really fuzzy, and you see a whole bunch of pollen on, on his body. It also has really long mouth parts. The, this family tends to have really long mouth parts, or proboscis, and that, that it can get really kind of deep into the flower to get the nectar that it needs. Uh, and so, so this is kind of a, a very, it's, it's, it's a very cute, cute uh, for, Personally, I find it's a very cute family of flies. Um, this is another one. Uh, it, it's it, again it has a, a really long proboscis, uh, so mouth really long mouth parts. Um, the, the one one pair of wings um, really kind of there, there's there's scattered pollen all over all over its body as well, and it's just really right into the flower um, feeding on its uh, feeding on the pollen. 
Uh, this is yet another bombelliate. It's not as hairy, but it has really beautiful wing. Uh, look, look at that wing pattern. I mean, it's, it's just gorgeous. Um, and it's uh, and it's just you know s sitting on this um, fe feeding on this um, on this aster um, well, on this black eyed season actually, but it's it's sort of just right feeding on there. Um, and you can see at the bottom here, there's a oh, oh sorry, I'll go back. There's a tiny little wasp at the bottom here that you can actually see. It's um, it's so so you can I mean the, the, this this wasp uh, this wasp is probably maybe like one or two two millimeters um, in size, whereas the fly is is you know is is, is a good in, inch or two even. Um, so so th these 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 flies are, are uh, can get pretty big. Um, another group of flies are the soldier flies or Stratiomyidae. And these tend to be um, as larvae. They tend to be um, scavengers or feed on decaying, um, decaying matter or, you know, on carrion. And so they, um, so as larvae, they, 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 they decompose matter, whereas as adults, they, they help pollinate. Um, and you can see this on this fly right here, you can see a lot of pollen on, on the thorax again, um, quite a bit collected on the pollen. It has a bit longer um, antennae, but still, but, but even though it has longer antennae, the other characters like a single wing and no, a no cinched waist actually kind of um, differentiates from, from other groups. Then some of the flies that you might not see, uh, you might, might kind of find unexpected, is something like the house flies or the mussids. Um, so, so it's fa family mussidae. Um, they they pollinate quite a bit, um, especially in, in in certain regions of the world, and that I'll talk about uh, a bit later on. Um, and so here's another um, another little house fly on on, on a on, on a little flower, on an anemone. Um, below flies, Califorids, again, scavengers as larvae, they, they tend to feed um, on carrion or, or scavenge um, on, on sort of decaying, decaying food matter as larvae, but as adults, they, 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 they collect a whole bunch of pollen, and this one is just covered, uh, all of its uh, ventral side is covered with, with pollen that, that it picked up from, from flower to flower, and that pollinates um, all, all a, bit, a bit everywhere. Uh, so here's another um, blowfly uh, on on a uh, uh, on an aster uh, on an aster plant, and you can actually see here that it's uh, that that it sh it's sharing its its pollen with a little tiny beetle on the side. So so they're they're together on a flower, kind of happily um, feeding and um, and had just having a good time really. Uh, another a group of flies are the scavenger flies or the sepsidae. Um, these again, as larvae, they tend to be much more scavengers. That's why they have that that, that common name. Uh, but as adults, they 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 can they pollinate and they 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 visit flowers really really commonly as well. Uh, and there's also marsh flies, um, such as the uh, well, which is com uh, which is the scientific name is the, the Bibionidae. Um, they tend to um, aggregate in huge uh, huge patches. Uh, in huge groups on on flower heads, um, especially these these tall umbelliferous um, flowers. So if you have a large field and and you have these big flowers kind of sticking up, they will kind of fly into them and sort of feed uh, and sort of meet up at these tall flowers, so so they can um, mate and reproduce. Uh, so so they actually they they meet up there quite quite commonly. Uh, and this, this is a close-up of, of a couple of marsh flies of the Bionids. Um, and you can actually, they have this, these really kind of very, really dark wings. Um, so so not, all, not all flies have really kind of pale wings. Some, some of them have really dark wings or, or even pattern like we saw before. And really kind of nice uh, brown little abdomens. Another group of flies are the crane flies. Um, also, um, and so the Tipulidae, um, they, some, some of them have 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 a bit longer mouth parts and they can just get into a flower um, they have really long legs um, they, 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 they they can feed on the pollen and you know pick up pick up a little pollen here and there bring it to another plant um, quite uh, quite readily as well uh, there's also fungus gnats um, you can see here that there's you know sort of the pollen on on the on, on the abdomen that's been picked up by uh, by by fungus gnats or the cyaridae um, they they just go straight into these plants and they they hide in there and yeah and and so they they feed quite readily on any type of plant that they can that they can find. And fungus gnats are um, you 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 generally recognize um, fungus gnats as because they're um, at, I mean if you have plants at home sometimes in potted plants um, they they can 
and you have a lot of water in that plant or on the soil, they can actually fly in there and start um, and, 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 and lay eggs. And so they, even, even though they are, are, are decomposers of, of, of fungus um, or, or, you know, sort of like little fungal spores, they, they pollinate as adults, but you can sort of, sometimes you can see them in, in your house or in wet areas um, in the forest or outside. Uh, this is another. This is um, typically how you see a fungus gnat on, on a uh, on a flower. So this is a a goldenrod, and you can actually see here that there's a little um, a little abdomen of a fungus gnat really kind of sticking out. You can you can just barely make out a leg there, and its head is like straight into the flower, just eating the pollen. Um, and so you'll see these um, quite generally just sitting like that inside there. Um, Another group of flies are the non-biting midges, so the Coronamidae. Uh, um, so these, uh, uh, so these, um, you, you can see. I mean, some, sometimes if you're by uh, a big water body, you can actually see them. Sort of, sometimes they, they, there's tons of them uh, on trees and on leaves, but they, you know, they sit quite um, quite a bit on flowers as well, and they can pick up pollen. I mean, they're not they're not huge pollinators, but they can pick up pollen as they go along and sort of land on on flowers from one flower to the other, and and sort of pollinate in that way. So they're not total pollinators, but they, they do it accidentally um, quite, quite a bit as well. And finally, a really surprising group that, that you might find surprising is that, uh, that mosquitoes or the Culicidae also pollinate flowers. These are actually, um, um, oh, this, this is a, a male a male mosquito um, because males don't, um, don't bite, but they do pollinate. And so they're not all bad, um, and so when, whenever you see a mosquito, I mean, they, they, they do bite and, and, and it does create issues, but at the same time, they, they do give some benefits into the ecosystem. So, I mean, mosquitoes are not all that bad. Um, so there, I mean, so, so this is kind of a, an overview of the fly, fly visitors. Um, they, there are quite, uh, I mean, the, some, some of the groups I didn't really kind of, um, touch upon sort of like the top um, top left corner um, a, a, a canopid kind of fly that's a that's a parasitoid uh, but it also pollinates quite a bit um, but there's um, a huge diversity of fly there's a huge diversity of flies that do pollinate and they have really kind of beautiful coloring um, you know they, they come in all in all sorts of colors you know stripes yellows reds greens and they have really beautiful wing patterns of you know brown and blacks and spots and and so so they, they really do deserve a really kind of closer look as, as you look about them. So we saw some of the common visitors uh, fly visitors and some not as common fly visitors um, but why do they actually um, visit flowers? Um, so first of all they they do them as a, as a food resource. Um, the nectar is a sugary solution so so it really kind of gives them energy. Uh, pollen is also rich in proteins, so it it, it it you know it gives them energy to live, and it gives them the energy to produce eggs and to and to and to reproduce. So so I mean so they also visit flowers because they need that 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 energy and that and 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 all those and all those those good things to be able to lay their eggs, especially females they need them to lay their eggs, whereas males need them to produce um you know sort of find the females as well. But they also can meet. Um, they also visit flowers um, for warmth. So that that could, that's kind of a, an interesting one because some some of the flowers, um, I mean, some flowers are kind of fuzzy. So an insect can bury itself inside um, the flower, and once it's inside the flower, then it actually kind of it, it can keep a bit warmer. It's kind of like you know being like in, in a cocoon or a tent or or you know just sort of you know having sort of have, have you know putting a blanket over over your head just to keep a bit warmer, but other plants, kind of, if you think of a, you know, of a sunflower, um, it's big and it's flat. Uh, and so if a, uh, you know, if a fly flies, flies to that flower, it's big and it's flat, it, it, it could have, you know, it could have absorbed the sun's energy. And when it absorbs the sun's energy, it, it tends to be warmer. So it's, it's a place where the, the fly can actually land and, and heat itself up and warm itself up, sort of, you know, as, as if we're sitting outside. Um, so if we, if we sit outside sort of in a field in, play, in the sun, we, we, we tend to be warmer than if we're sitting sort of in, in a more enclosed space. But it's also, rond uh, it's, it's also for uh, rendezvous, so if, as a meeting place. Um, so as we saw with the Bibianids before, I, 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 I put this picture back up. So 
so, so the marsh flies kind of aggregate or meet up at these tall flowers to be able to to reproduce or to or to, or to get sort of or to to find the same um, the same species and, and and to be able to find themselves within within a, within a system a bit easier. So that's why flies visit flowers. But what flowers do flies like most? Well, some of the characters. Uh, that are specific for uh, for for flies to to pick a particular flower. Um, first of all, there's um, about 555 flowering plant species that flies can visit, but there's there's probably more. I mean, we, we keep, I mean, research keeps progressing about finding which uh, which which plants are actually preferred. But there's also some characteristics. So, for example, um, flies really like. Well, I mean, there there's a range of colors that uh, flies like. Some go from very pale and dull, you know, like the whites, um, especially early in the season, to really kind of dark brown and purple, purples. Um, so some, some flies tend to really like the darker colors because it might remind them of, of you know, sort of, of um, carrion or, or, or decaying matter that tends to be a bit darker. So it might kind of, um, especially those scavenging flies, it might bring them in a bit, a bit more. Um, sometimes they really like um, flecked uh, of plant, uh, plants or flowers with, that are flecked or have translucent patches. So, so the, the second picture from on your on your left, you can actually see that there's tiny little spots on on, on this flower, and that that kind of that, that can also bring in some some particular particular species or particular groups of, of flies to them. Um, flies also like flowers that have funnels or really kind of complex traps, you know, like orchids. Um, there's a, a group, there's some flies that really, really like orchids and they, because they can go and hide inside. And as they're hiding inside the plant, they, they, they can um, collect up some pollen and, 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 um, and feed on them. Like, like this, like this here, um, you see this little tiny fly. Um, so you're the, the, so the third picture from, from the left, you can actually see a tiny little fly here with, with these two, this, these two yellow, kind of like a backpack with, with two yellow um, dots on it. And that, that's, that's, uh, that's pollen that, that they picked up from this particular plant and that they'll carry to another plant um, to pollinate the other plant. And so they pick them up by accident, but at the same time, they, because this plant is complex, it, it's, they're able to, to sort of to, to pick those, those, um, those seeds up, uh, to, 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 that, to pick that pollen up, actually. Um, they also really like flowers that produce pollen, and they like the they like that they produce pollen because that's uh, again, as the slide said before, they they need that pollen as a source of energy and as a food source. And some flies, like especially the scavenging um, flies, really like those that smell bad, because uh, because that again that brings them in. They 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 think that it's it is something that's decaying, so they'll they'll tend to go in there to, to, you know, maybe lay some eggs because that, that'll, that'll um, increase their reproductive success. And so they'll have more, um, more offspring. So those are the kinds of flowers that flies do like. Um, so there's a really wide range and there's a lot of different types of plants, plants that, that flies like. Um, and where do plants pollinate most frequently? Um, when you think about it, um, in, in, in our region, sort of, you know, North Carolina and, and into, you know, Southern Canada, you can actually kind of think that flies really like uh, that bees are the main pollinators because they really are, are around um, because that, that's the most common fly that's the most common plant visitor that we see and flower visitor that we see. But where bees are not as common, flies really kind of take over. So for example, in the Arctic where bees are not as common, I mean, they're still there, but they're not as common, um, flies actually overtake uh, the pollination in those in, in those regions so and, and there's uh, there's there's been some research done looking at um, the number of pollinators in the Arctic and and there's um, so these these mussids or these house fly species actually really are the key pollinators in northern uh, in northern regions um, so everything like you know above the tree line into the tundra and and then there's yeah, there, there's some really good research coming out um, of of the northern regions um, by by a lot of uh, northern researchers. And so if you see if you look here, um, you can actually see that I mean so these are some of the pictures that I took um, when I was up in the Yukon a, a few years ago, and you can see that there's you know uh, you have you have some beetles and and some uh, and you have some bumblebees and you have some butterflies. But the most common um, insect that I saw on plants was actually flies, um, and they go on, on on different types. So you have you have the you have the hoverflies up here uh, up here in the north on some yarrow. 
you have you have some 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 uh, some some other uh, some, so, so, and and the mustard flies and the house flies uh, at the bottom here and the and the purple just really kind of inside um, feeding on 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 the pollen. And as um, as the as one of the papers said, one fly to rule them all. These mustard flies that are the key pollinators in the Arctic, and it is indeed the case because they really kind of just uh, really they they use the they use the flowers not only to to aggregate and to meet up with other uh, of their uh, of their own species, but they also um, pollinate and they and they pretty much do everything on these flowers. And and you can find you know huge numbers of of flies on, on wild roses and on golden on northern goldenrods and, and, and on other types of plants that are just up in the Arctic and it's and it's really very beautiful to see. And um, so the flies pollinate most frequently in the Arctic uh, uh, and in regions where bumblebees are not as common as flies, but they're they're still around uh, a bit all over the place. Uh, and and now but and e but even though they are not as common here. I mean, we still cultivate, we still do a lot of agriculture. I mean, we do a lot of agricultural um, planting uh, in, in, the south, uh, in the southern regions and not in the Arctic, in the, in, in the temperate regions. And, and, these, and flies actually really do help, cult help cultivate plants. And so you can actually see here that pollinating flies give a major contribution to plant diversity and agricultural production. And there's, again, um, a lot of research has been going on, on into this and there's way more, uh, way more research that's, that's needed so we can really understand how, in, how flies and how other insects actually kind of really do help contribute because there really is a, 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 a lot of really interesting um, things going on in, in agricultural systems and with pollinating flies. So what cultivated plants do flies pollinate? Um, they, can cult uh, they can pollinate over 100 cultivated plant species, and this includes um, field vegetables um, like lettuce, tomatoes, onions, um, strawberries, uh, uh, garlic, um, to, to, you know, to, to tree fruit like apples, um, to, you know, and, and, and you, you can have them on, on um, an or, or, um, Oil seed rape, sorry, uh, on on peppers, on ca they even pollinate cashews and they, they pollinate cocoa. Um, so if you if you're sticking around for the next uh, for the next talk, um, it's going to be all about flies pollinating cocoa. So I definitely uh, recommend listening more in into that because this is just kind of an introduction of flies as pollinators. Uh, but they can also pollinate um, you know strawberries, cauliflower, uh, mustard, sunflowers, um, carrots. I mean they, they, it's 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 a lot of different plants can be pollinated by flies, and they, they do help contribute a lot to uh, to to the agro to our agro ecosystems. But uh, and and here's another uh, a study that's been done on hoverflies as efficient pollinators of oilseed rape. So 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 I, I talked to them right. At, I talked about these because they're the most common um, fly pollinators. You know the, the 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 bees of of the fly world, and they actually kind of hang out. They, they, they're very good uh, 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 to, uh, as cultivating. And, and another interesting uh, point about hoverflies is that they're very predatory. Uh, they're very, they are predatory as um, as larvae. So, so if you have an agricultural field with a with a lot of different hover uh, with with hoverflies on it, you won't have to worry about your aphid population so much because they are highly predatory on aphids so you can see a lar uh, you can see the the larvae kind of like the the long elongated um um organisms on, on these uh like the the longer or the longer um oval um organisms on on the on the two middle pictures and the bunch of little tiny green dots those are the aphids and they just they they just have a heyday with with these aphids they can just eat them um quite a bit and in the and the right bottom corner, you see a pupa. So it's uh, it's that that stage between the of um, that that stage that life stage of a, of an insect that's between the immature and the uh, and the mature life stages. So you can actually see so the the whole life history of, of of this fly. So not only is it is it a good biocontrol agent as as a larvae because it feeds on aphids, but it's also really good adult uh, as adults as a pollinator. So it's it's a really good um, insect to have in your agricultural systems or, or anywhere really because it, you'll have um, fewer aphids and the ecosystem will be much more in balance if you have these flies with, uh, with you or any other fly as well. 
So we, now we saw what cultivated plants are pollinated by flies, um, but what can we do to actually help pollinators overall? So, um, so really what you can do is actually become a wildlife gardener. So, I mean, uh, probably a lot of people on here um, already think about this kind of on a day-to-day -day basis, but really plant native pollinator friendly species. Um, so, but, 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 and, and, and a nice diversity of, of plant species. This is kind of, uh, this is kind of a picture from uh, uh, really kind of near my house. Um, and it kind of has, um, it's kind of like a little pollinator garden, it has a nice diversity of, 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 of different plant species that are all native to, to the region. And it really kind of brings in, um, you know, it brings in bees, it brings butterflies, it brings in flies. And so, so it's actually kind of, it kind of um, gets, a good, uh, gets a good and healthy ecosystem going. And, but it also kind of, once they, they come into this, to this uh, because they're brought in by these flowers, they tend to sort of go around um, a bit further on into the sort of, you know, into the other trees and into the forest or into, onto the field next door. Um, next to this, next to this little patch, and actually kind of help out that ecosystem as well. And so, so having, you know, having nice little gardens if you have the space by your house, then it's definitely um, a, a nice way to 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 promote um, pollinators in, in your area. And also, really avoid uh, pesticides because um, you know insecticides kill insects. Um, so they. So if you have, for example, a lawn um, that in front of your house that's being eaten by root grubs. And so you put some insecticide, you're not only affecting the, the root grubs, but you're also affecting other insects that are, are in, in the system as well. Because if, 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 a, you know, if a fly lands on, on, on the grass that you just sprayed, it, it's going to get affected by it, by the insecticide and might die and may not, you know, sort of, so, so kind of uh, not be in the system for as long. And herbicides that kill um, important native plants. I mean, those are um, also, I mean, so if, if there's fewer native plants, then the then the the insects can't actually have the food necessary to be able to survive, and again, sort of, and again, that kind of spirals out of, and, and sort of the system sp start spiraling out of out of control as well, and, and becoming, um, and, and becoming un, uh, un un really kind of unnatural. But um, so if you can, you know, plant your own uh, plant, nice um, wildlife gardens, but also avoid pesticides as much as you can. And finally, um, uh, as a bigger picture thing, really kind of protect and restore native grasslands and other natural habitats. Because I mean, if, if um, so for example, if there's um, a, a farm field that's, that's being sort of, that's kind of, that, that's not being used anymore because, you know, because the soil is kind of, because the, the soil doesn't produce um, as well as used to or, or doesn't produce at all, it can't produce anymore. If you start restoring into a native grassland and sort of uh, planting those native flowers that are back to the those native to the to, to what it was before then um, then actually that will promote pollination and promote you know bring back you know, we'll, we'll start bringing back flies and start bringing back um, other pollinators like bees and, and butterflies and, and beetles and sort of and get back and get the ecosystem a, a lot more interesting and a lot more diverse uh, again all, all over again. So really kind of try to help uh, protect and restore native grasslands. So we kind of went through everything. Um, I, I kind of went quickly and, and if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, and, but there's really kind of, a you know, three or four things that I really want you to remember. For, first of all, flies are really important in our ecosystems um, as pollinators and, and as other, um, and, and for other reasons as well. Um, there are a lot of different groups of flies that pollinate. And, and they really are beautiful. If you, if you really look closely at them, they're, they're just a, an amazing group of insects. And so I, ho I hope that next time you go outside looking at flowers, um, you, you'll start looking at and seeing what's, what's what within the, within the system and, and sort of see, and try, trying to recognize one group from the other. Um, and so you can actually kind of practice with this, uh, with this picture as well. So, um, so um, thank you for listening and um, yeah, en enjoy, uh, en enjoy being outdoors and, and, and looking for flies. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia. That was fantastic. I know, um, you know, we had a practice last week <laughs> where you gave this presentation to us and I learned so much. And the more we go into um, learning about flies, and you know, I thought flies were cool anyway, but I had no idea the diversity and kind of the unique characteristic that you could find just within um, diptera. And so I just, you know, love hearing about it so much. Um, 
And I was wondering if you can share any resources as we go out and we start looking for these flies um, of like how best to ID them and um, or even, you know, reach out to people. I know that usually I just literally put everything in iNaturalist, but sometimes, it, you know, getting it down to a species, you know, can be a little bit harder if I don't get a great picture from far away or something like that, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, iNaturalist is really good, um, as, you know, for, for all sorts of insects. Um, I mean, flies to the species level sometimes are very difficult to identify because um, sometimes you have to look sort of really kind of under a microscope to get to get really kind of characters to get species specific characters uh, but you know sort of to particular um, to you know sort of you know at, like at the family level kind of you know like hover this is a hover fly versus this is a house fly those can be done um, quite a, a bit more easily and they will be recognized on, on iNaturalist and I think that's 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 probably the best resource um, there's bugguidenet.net um, dot net that's also a, a good um, resource for for pictures for for, for flies themselves um, there's a book that recently came out on hoverfly identification um, by um, Jeff Skevington um, in, the, in the hoverflies of the Northeast that's a really kind of good uh, resource for for hoverflies themselves and it goes way into detail about because some of them one some of the hoverflies can be taken down to species just based on their on their patterns. Um, so yeah, so, so those are, those are a, a few good resources that, that you can actually look into. And so I know when we, we think about like butterflies and moths and um, things like that, you know, they have host plants and really a lot of times those host plants are for the caterpillars, right? And um, I know that the larva of a lot of flies obviously have very different diets and very different lifestyles than the flies. And so if we really are trying to encourage some of these fly pollinators and more species diversity in our, in our yards, um, is there, are there special things? Like I know black soldier flies you, you know, and blow flies, things like that, you know, um, lots of people find black soldier fly larvae in their compost bins and stuff like that. And so um, we had a talk this morning about black soldier flies and he was like, you know, maybe leave a little bit of that food material on top and don't bury it right away to encourage those black soldier flies. And so are there things like that we can do to encourage kind of more diversity and more um, kind of, I guess, breeding of flies? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, and I mean, sort of, um, well, I, I, I think kind of leaving, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, when you, when you have sort of a, a garden, um, you know, sort of have kind of diverse micro habitats within that sort of garden kind of thing. So maybe have like, you know, if, if you have some wetter spots, uh, you know, sort of not, don't drain them as much kind of thing. So, so, you know, you can keep a bit of a bit of a bit wetter kind of area. I mean, uh, as long as it doesn't, you know, affect your, your house structure or it's because you, you don't want to be having problems with that. But at the same time, um, so sort of yeah so so having kind of like micro habitats that that the flies can actually sort of have a good place for for you know for the larvae to develop as well as for, for the adults um yeah but i mean you know um uh, flies do fly quite distance so some distances so i mean they, they can you know they, they can fly within you know in, in the life they can probably fly you know like maybe from like two um i'm talking about kilometers um because of course, I'm Canadian. Um, you know, okay, a few miles, maybe like ten miles within a lifetime. So, um, so you can actually, um, so so if if they can fly, you know, so, so they can fly from habitat to habitat. So so if if there's a matrix of different types of habitats w where you live, then that actually kind of can support and actually have a higher diversity of of, of insects and, and and flies overall. Awesome, and that's good to hear that they can kind of they will fly so far because. I always get stuck on like they have a home range and so if like you know an insect gets in my car and I drive halfway down the street and throw it out the window <laughs> like yeah I'm sorry I'm disrupting your life <laughs> but you don't know. yeah we'll, pro we'll probably get a you know sort of a bit, a bit you know sort of surprised about where it is but yeah it'll, it'll, it'll survive it'll be okay awesome well thank you so much um yeah, no and I really appreciate you um coming and telling us all about these I hope everyone got um as much out of it as I did and um, before we leave, I just wanna um, thank you all again for attending BugFest and for coming to this presentation. Um, of course, if you are a frequent attendee of BugFest in years past, you know that we have uh, our theme bug shirt every year and this year is no different except 
since it's a pre-order, you have all these color choices. So you can choose from any color and pre-order online. Um, you can also join or renew your mem museum membership to get a free Bug Fest t-shirt. And of course, it's starring the fly and look at all those adorable flies on that shirt. Um, so definitely pick up your t-shirt. Um, if you are enjoying Bug Fest and you um, can spare it, please consider donating to the museum at naturalsciences.org. And um, again, thank you so much. We hope to see you at more BugFest presentations. We have lots and lots more. Just go to bugfest.org. We have lots of things to do there, um, lots of activities, and of course, lots more programs coming up to register for. So we hope to see you again. Bye-bye. And thanks again, Julia. Bye. Thank you.